What is up guys? How you doing? It's James from J Ray Games and I'm back with another VR tutorial and today I am so excited to tell you guys that the day has come when finally we can use our PS Move controllers, the new version, using Steam VR or Free Pi Bridge. You don't want to miss this one. I'm going to show you how to set it up. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so today we're talking about PS Move controllers. And if you have been around this channel for a while, you know that I have shown you guys how to use your uh, VR headsets, particularly your PS VR headset, to work with the PC and to work with the PS Move controllers. However, um, up until a few months ago, that worked just fine until Sony released their new PS Move controllers. And if you bought a bundle um, and received... Um, you know, two controllers with it, chances are you got the new version. And you can tell because the model would have been CECHZCM2U, which tells you that those are the new ones. Now, the problem with that was the old PS Move service worked by connecting to the mini USB port, which was on the bottom of the controller. Well, if you look on the new ones, you only have a micro USB port. You no longer have the mini USB port, which caused a big problem because now all of a sudden the controllers were no longer connectable to your PC without, again, an adaptation to the software. Fortunately, the fantastic people and developers at PS Move Service have resolved this issue. They fixed it and it works fantastic. In fact, I would say it works even better than it did before because they've gone and uh, modified a few other things as well. So let's just switch to the desktop. I'm going to show you how to get this up and running. And hopefully you guys can be using your PS Move controllers with your Steam VR or your FreePi very soon. All right, so we are on the desktop now. And I just want to first of all show you where you can go to get this. Again, this will be in my description below. But uh, this is what you're looking for. If you're planning on playing PS Move like Steam VR games, uh, whether you're using a PSVR, or you're using a Windows Mixed Reality, or whatever headset you might want to use, um, you're going to probably want some sort of controller that you can use to interact with the world. And that's the whole point of this. So the latest release, 1.5, was released about 22 days ago. Um, I'm a little slow on this, but I've been playing with it and testing it, making sure it all works. Um, so you're going to want to download that. Like I said, it's in my description below. There's also a free Pi version as well. So depending on how you use your PS Move controllers, um, you're going to get the proper version. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your cord, which you would get from your PS4. Um, it doesn't come with the controllers, but it's just a micro USB, fairly common cord. And hook that up to one of your USB ports. And what you're going to want to do is unzip the folder and open it up. Now, what you're going to see inside of there is very similar to how it looked before. If you've never seen my previous videos on how to set this up, I strongly recommend that you watch them because I go through and I explain how to set up your cameras and how to set up the trackers and all that good stuff. But let's just do it quick and I'll put the link up so you guys can follow the rest if you haven't seen that before. So you'll notice that pretty much everything is the same. I can test my camera if I want. I can see where my trackers are located. If I'm using a Kinect camera, don't have to worry about that because I can use something like Driver for VR and get around that. But basically what we were really looking for is the PS Move service and they made an admin version which basically just runs in administrator mode. So I'm going to double click that. All right, so once you double click that, you're going to see that this window pops up somewhere on your desktop uh, once you've hit yes. Um, and this is basically the uh, PS Move service that's running. It has to stay running. You can't close this window, otherwise it won't work. So what you want to do is you want to minimize this, put it down on your taskbar before proceeding to the next step. Okay, so we're going to want to go into PS Move Config Tool next, and we're going to hit Connect. And it's going to bring us into this menu, which looks very similar to the old one. They kind of reworked the layout a little bit. But we're going to take our controller now and we're going to hook it up to this micro USB port on the cam on the controller. We're going to do that and we're going to go control settings. 
and we're going to click pair controller. And when we do that, it says unplug from the USB and press the PS Moves PS button to connect to the service. All right, and you'll see that as it does that, it's going to allow us to connect. Every time this light turns off, we want to push the button once again. All right, so every time this little red LED turns off, you keep pressing the PS button until it gets to step seven of seven. And you can see that it jumps all over the place, but eventually it will stay lit and it will jump to this screen here. Now this is the screen where we actually can tell it what tracking color we want, if it's the left or the right hand, which is a nice new feature. Um, and we can also do our calibration of the controller. And that's what I recommend you do next before doing the other controller. I'm not going to do the other controller because it's exactly the same process. But what you want to do is you want to take your controller, put it down on a stable surface, and you want to go to controller calibration, calibrate gyroscope. And you'll notice that the magnetometer is disabled because that was used in the old versions. But you want to use the gyroscope, calibrate the gyroscope. And what this is basically doing is it's checking to see how much drift your gyroscope has in this particular controller. And the reason that that's important is every gyroscope is not perfect and what it wants to do is it wants to compensate for the drift that the gyroscope has. So while you're using the controller um, this will minimize the amount that it drifts while you're playing it. Alright, and this just takes a couple, uh, couple seconds, doesn't take very long. And once you get to 100% at this window and we hit OK, you will see now that this controller responds perfectly to what I see on screen. All right, as I'm rotating this and turning this controller, it is responding on screen exactly to what I'm doing in the real world. This is very important. Now at any time, if you want to reset the controller's position, um, all you do is point it forward and hold the select button, and that will reset the forward direction of the controller, which again will eliminate the drift. It's, it's basically like resetting the headset when you use the PlayStation. All right, and that is now set up. You do the exact same thing to your other controller and you should be good to go. Now, like I said, I'm gonna post some links that are gonna be probably coming up right now. If you wanna use it with a Kinect uh, camera, you do not have to set up any cameras for it to track, just the Kinect and it should do the job. But if you wanna use PS3 eye cameras and you wanna do it the traditional sort of PS move way, I got a video for that as well, which will be up there too. Um, so the next step on how you use these with your Steam VR or your free pie is up to you. All right. So hopefully you found that useful and hopefully that gets um, a whole bunch of more people playing with their um, PlayStation Move controllers on the PC. If you own a PSVR and you already have the bundle and, and all the rest of it, then why not just try this out, get it working. It works fantastic. You're going to be able to play tons of games with this setup. One thing that I forgot to add in this video that I just kind of threw in here is the issue that people have been having where the controllers do not show up in Steam VR. This is a pretty common issue. And if you've checked my comments, you know how to fix it. But I'm going to show everybody the best way to resolve any sort of weird issue that you get when you're, uh, when you're customizing your Steam VR. Basically, when you go into your library in Steam, you want to go down to Tools and you want to look for Steam VR. All right, and there it is. Okay, and what you want to do is you want to right click it and choose Properties. And you want to go into the Betas and look for the one that's called Open VR Input Emulator Temporary. This version of Steam VR seems to fix a lot of issues that you're going to have with things like mapping the buttons on the controllers or using um, any sort of open VR setup like what we're doing here with, uh, with our setup uh, using the PS Moose. So anyways, if you are experiencing any issues, this is what you should do. Anyways, if you found this useful, make sure to subscribe and comment and like the video. Um, I try to get back to everybody's comments as soon as possible, and I'm pretty good at replying, I think. 
I've also started a Patreon site, so um, if you want to donate or contribute to this channel, you can check out that as well. If you found this stuff useful and you want to uh, contribute, that would be fantastic. I will have some giveaways depending on how many people donate to that. Till next time, thanks for watching. You guys are awesome, and I hope to catch you in the next video.